you kind of started the whole, you know, white kid doing R and B, and you had tremendous success. You know, three platinum albums, one of them double platinum. You know, then you had kind of like the next wave of white R and B artists, and you made some comments about them. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin Thicke, for one. What was your take on Robin Thicke? Robin Thicke uh, was he was actually he came up the same. ERG basically. Uh, he was signed by Babyface and signed by. Um, oh, really? He was signed by Babyface? Yeah, he was signed by okay. Babyface and, and Andre uh, Harrell. Okay. And um, it was a trip to watch my career kind of like be sort of like fall into this hoofla of like, you know, who's going to, who the label is going to be and if they're going to be as supportive as, as Epic was and if we're going to have as clear of a run. As we had every, all, you know, it seemed like there was a real, I was catered to at Epic, you know, that to not have that sort of, that same energy with my career and to watch it happen for someone else was definitely a challenge for me. It was, it was humbling to watch another guy kind of come into the scene and sort of like everyone was asked, what do you think about Robin Thicke in every interview I ever did? <laughs> right. Which actually is kind of cool. We actually just ran into each other. We did a show together not too long ago in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's been all these years we've never met. Oh, really? And we just ran into each other. I said, you know, he asked me, he's like, so, you know, what about that? We, we talked about, you know, basically we were, we were brief about it. But I said, I've had to talk about you in many interviews. <laughs> As you're and talking about it. And he goes, now. that's kind of suck. And I was like, it absolutely <laughs> kind of does, you know. But I nevertheless did it, you know. And so, and I try to be as respectful as possible because I think people want to pose like almost like fighters against each other. Like this guy's yeah. a good fighter. This guy, like, I want to watch him fight. And it's like, nah. Um, I, 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 from the very beginning, I felt threatened because obviously, I was, you know, that was sort of like my neck of the woods, the baby face thing. And I, I, I felt kind of like, okay, this guy, he kind of came in. And, stole some of my wind, you know what I mean? It really, really was apparent for me early on. I let it kind of get to me a little bit. And um, I think people kind of kind of fed into it a bit. Yeah. And so that that was a challenge. And I, I, I definitely had to um, adjust to the whole scene of it not being a, a, um, a new thing to be a white guy in R&B, that there was other guys that were in this thing too, that were yeah. doing this thing. And now you, you were gonna have to deal with, you know, sort of being compared to them and mm -hmm. vice versa. I wonder if they were ever asked about me though in their interviews, you know what I mean? <laughs> but well, you've actually offered to, to battle Robin. Oh no, let's not talk about that. <laughs> no? <laughs> Like, we're actually cool, yeah. Well, we don't but I mean, mean, I mean, just because you're battling doesn't mean you guys aren't cool. Oh, like, you know what? I'm, I think compa that, I'm competitive I think you're with, talking with about, other people. Yeah, you're talking about what? Probably 2006. I said something like that. Well, like, know, a, like a piano I, I versus grew, piano. I actually vocal. grew my hair long. You know what I mean? <laughs> in spite, <laughs> in spite of Robin Thicke, because he had the long hair. Remember? No, no. You know, it's all. It was all. Anything that was said was said in jest. A complete. Like I think I was making, making fun of the fact that we were both white guys you know what i mean we should have a contest with who could you know what i mean something funny like that and back then it would have been it would have been funny i would love to do a song together how about that and just yeah. let's leave it at that and that would be a yeah. dope collaboration yeah, Rob, robin think is dope man yeah absolutely I mean, blurred is. lines I th that doesn't as, really uh, def define that doesn't define him though for me i think when i hear a record like the first song that he came well the first song that i really recognized him for was lost without you Beautiful, beautiful ballad, and uh, his falsetto is amazing. But why are we talking about Robin Thicke though right now? Anyway, let's talk about something else. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm a fan of both of you guys. Thank you, brother. You know what I mean, I, I'm big up Robin Thicke though. You know what I mean? Keep doing your thing, man. Let's smash, smash, you know, smash the game, man, with more soul music. It's just great feelings that the people can enjoy, man. Yeah, man. Leave something special behind, you know. Well, you continue to put out projects. Uh, you know, after after Stronger Every Day, you put out Holiday Wishes from me to you, mm -hmm. Helpless Romantic in 2008, mm -hmm. Comfortable Swag mm -hmm. in 2012. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you, you're pretty much independent. Yes. 
so much has changed um, since the days of being signed to labels and putting out CDs, actual tangible items in where, where do you buy a CD now? Where do you actually go to buy a physical unit of like, how is it sold now? It's not CD, it's <laughs> e eBay. Amazon, Craigslist, eBay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you might find one. Street oh, there's corner. a place called Amoeba. Amoeba, <laughs> yeah, like, Rasputin's. It's like, you're right. Right. It's like some guy who's got my stuff on reprint. He's like, right. he's like vinyl company. I don't know. You know, the thing is, like, every you can't really compare the game back in the '90s to the game now. You know, because it's apples and oranges. It's just, it's mm -hmm. you can't fuse the two. But what you do have to do is adjust the times, because otherwise you're going to be a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. So you know, you see the necess You look at a guy like me. Look at social media. You know, what do you mean? Uh, my social media numbers, how many friends I have. Like, well, I sold millions of records. Like, people stood in line and un took the time to un unwrap the plastic that was so hard to get off the CDs. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The time it took to get that off, be like, by the time you got off there, you were like, all right. Yeah, it probably sounds good by now. You know what I mean? All that work up. Oh, no, yeah. You're opening up the thing and you're checking out the lyrics and you're looking at the, you know, the. Production, pictures, production credits the production credits yeah. the, the the pictures i mean it was a it was an experience it's a, a visceral experience, experience. And, and and you had to spend like 16 dollars on it and especially it was a commitment you know one, and I, one time like like in yeah. high school i remember it was like okay you know i had a job in high school and i could buy one or two cds you know a week yeah if i had the money and it's like i had to make that that purchase count yeah you know you can't just stream whatever you want the, the whole month you had to Okay, I'm gonna buy this, and you I hope I mean? it's good because there's, there's no return policy at yeah, Tower right? Records. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. We're stuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I think it was much more of okay. I'm gonna make this commitment right now. Buy these, you know, 12, 14 songs, whatever it mm -hmm. was. And as an artist, it was very validating to have this many records be, you know, pushed at one time. You know, I could I could say this um, one time. And, and, you know, if you bought the album, you might not listen to every record, but I gave you the chance to hear my entire sentiment. Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand, these records are talking about, you're talking about making these albums, you're talking about three out, three, year, three years of my life, four mm -hmm. years of my life, maybe five years. And this, this new album is taking me, the longest it's ever taken me to make an album. How long? Five years. Okay, and you got a new project coming out. Yes, I do. And yes. the name of it is? It's called Understand. Yeah, um, the new single is featuring uh, Donnell Jones. Mm -hmm. It's a duet with Donnell Jones, and the song is entitled Understand. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those records where it's taking it back to the essence of what I gave you in the 90s, but with the, with the 2019 flair on it, you know what I mean? Um, the, I've, you know, I've grown with the times, and I'm changing with the times. And I feel like the sonic palette is what it is today, so I pull what I like from, you know, how tracks go right now you know back in the 90s we used a lot of sampled snares a lot of organic kind of sampled snares from old jazz records or old funk records or whatever right now we're in a very much a machine sort of tr808 kind of a phase where we we like the 808s pretty much tough right you know? the sampling's too expensive these days i mean it's just it's, <laughs> it's, it's sort of obscure the more the boutique style music right. uses that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. And I love it all. Yeah. So I, I take what I want from, you know, I let the times influence me how I want, you know. And yeah. uh, it's like a cherry pick from the, for the best. I, I love, you know, production of Travis Scott. I love yeah. the ambience in, in, in today's music, you know, with the mixing and a lot of the new tricks that, this, it, you know, it's like the new sonic palette that these kids have is, a, is, a, is <laughs> straight up my alley. I love it. I mean, I love the, you know, the... the uh, the Post Malone's, the Weekends, mm -hmm. anybody who has this sort of darker sounding R and B, I love it because it's bringing something new that didn't exist. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, as someone who has kind of a collection of what I consider timeless music. Thank you. I mean, you've been touring this whole time, I'm sure. Yes, touring is the you know the main bread and butter of what I do. Yeah. And as well as you know, when it when it all comes down to it. You're talking about your songs, so what better way of being able to celebrate your music than to actually perform the songs, you know, and be able to continue to sing those songs. 
even if you have one or two records that the world knows and you just go out and sing a bunch of covers, that's still rewarding. But let alone I've been able to have, you know, a lot of records. So my album, I can, you know, I can go through now about nine albums now of record. I think it's eight or nine albums I can go through and sort of cherry pick from each album. And I can give you about 90 minutes or more of music, you know, and not flinch. Yeah. You know, and it's it's, uh, it's been amazing because the fans kind of come up to the shows, you know, with such a vast knowledge of of everything that I've done. And I just feel so blessed in that sense of like that they even know that I did a collaboration with Nas or I did a collaboration with Guru or, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, yeah, it's it because that, you know, to me, it's about the music and it's about what I'm going to leave behind, you know, yeah. with this music. It was never for me about being like famous for being like a sex symbol or being like a, a guy who did anything but music. Cause I'm not a good dancer, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> well, John B, man, appreciate you coming in. Thank you, my man. Uh, appreciate like I said, you. man, a very dope catalog. Thank you, my man. With, with timeless you. music that will continue to, to resonate long after all of us are gone. Thank you, my man. You know, I, mean, I, I know with what I do, I try to, I think about that. I think about what am I, I like the interviews I'm doing right now. Mm. How are people 100 years from now going to react to them? I hear you. You, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That, and I feel like the most successful people think beyond their own lifetimes. Think about their legacies and Absolutely. think about what exactly they're doing more so than just how much money will it make right now. Right. And, and I feel like with your art, that's how you approach it. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's absolutely. huge, man. I appreciate absolutely, that. Absolutely, man. You. And thank you for you know for for keeping it real with me, man. You know, uh, I I I know you're a you're a you're a serious head in in hip hop for real. You do this thing for real. Yeah. You're the you're the first one to flip the I got five on it beat on any nobody had flipped it no, on no remix it yet. You okay. flipped. Are you still down on that on that on that mixtape, bro? Yep. So you killed that, man. Yeah, man. And, uh, that was our beginning, but here we are. How many years later? Fifteen years later. Still rocking. Still rocking, man. Ah, still man. doing it good. Both of us still healthy. That's Both right. Both of us brother. still looking good. Both grown men. We're Gotta both grown it. men. That's We're it. doing our thing, man. Yeah. Congrats on everything. That's right, man. And uh, man, keep doing your thing. Bless looking you, man. forward to it. Respect to you. Peace. Thank you.